Hello there YouTube, this is Chris again. Apologies again for no video yesterday. When you're depressed like me and you're not full of energy, you find it hard to make videos daily. So. And I'm sorry. That's why my videos are long. And uh, if you are a fan, you'll watch them. I hope. Now what this video is about, social security disability. Not a bailout or a cop out. To me a disability is defined when it impairs your ability to function and live a normal life and it impairs your ability to have meaningful and gainful employment thus providing yourself with an income that was able to sustain a life. There are definitions of physical and mental. Physical is you can see it, it's obvious. Mental is less less likely to or harder to be determined because it's inside and apparently what has happened over the years so many people fake it they lie because they don't want to work look if i was fine and i had friends and i had females in my life oh man i would work i would want to have money so i could go out and have fun you don't want to be the only guy that's got no money but that's not the case here I legitimately cannot work. My anxiety, social anxiety and fear disorder is so strong that the only way I can work is if I had a job alone. Well, guess what? I don't have any skill sets to work any jobs alone. I have no, the only skill set I have is I'm a cook. A damn good one at that. When I was young and during a, a I guess an up period, because depression is a roller coaster. But fortunately for me, I've been on a big down the last four years. But my, when I was younger, I'd say around 21, 22, um, I was on and up. And I worked at one of the top restaurants in our town and worked under the top chef in our town. My grandmother worked for him for 30 years. He hired me because of my grandma's recommendation. He taught me well. He was a... Uh, I guess uh, Culinary Institute of America, CIA is where he went. He's a, a well-renowned chef in a well-renowned chef in Pensacola. His name was Gus Silvabos, and uh, in recent years the economy has hurt him. But when I was working for him, he taught me good, um, and I learned a lot. So, and I'm about to always into cooking. I've always been a cook. I've been cooking my, on my own since I was 11. Sure, my grandmother made dinners, but when she didn't, when you know, when I was hungry and uh, you know it wasn't time for dinner or whatnot, I would cook my own meal. You know, so I've always enjoyed cooking. That's something I was very good at. Unfortunately, the restaurant business one there's a lot of people. You have to deal with a big kitchen. You have to deal with waitresses. You have to deal with customers. Um, and, and, and now, if you're cooking the kitchen, you don't really relate to customers. Uh, but it depends on what type of restaurant you're in. There are open kitchens and there are closed kitchens. Well, anyways, that job got screwed up when I went through a down period, and that's when I started using drugs. So I, I, I messed up with him, and I regret that because right now I could be a sous chef, and he probably would have helped me go through college to get that honor, and I would be probably his top, in, uh, or at least second in command behind the general manager I would because by now I would have been there for 10 years but you know what I'm not all because of depression I can't fathom working in a restaurant again one the depression has caused my joints to hurt my back to hurt neck pain all these pains in my arms and in my shoulders I can't stand on my feet on a hard floor for 8 to 12 hours and move around real fast I don't have the energy because of the depression and a sedative lifestyle that it has caused over the last four years. The down, no up, it's been nothing but down. I'm, at, I'm almost at bottom. To me, bottom would be death. I'm hovering above that. So there's no way I can ever do the work that I um, have done. And under the disability, oh, also there's no way I can be around that many people. My anxiety is just too high, no way. No medicines. I, like I said, I've been on medicines. They do not work. They do not help. When it's hard for you to go to a grocery store you've went to all your life and you still have trouble going into that store 
even though you recognize it, you're familiar with it, and you purposely buy the same exact foods every week so you're in there as less time as possible, yeah, there's a problem there. And I will say this, no way I can ever work in the field I was in. Another uh, thing when it comes to disability is they look at the type of work you perform. I have earned enough work credits. Yes, I have. Thankfully. Um, but the work I perform can no longer perform that type of work. They will also look to see if you have any other trades. I do not. Therefore, I believe that I can get disability. I applied for disability two years ago, actually two and a half years ago. Denied. And that happens to a lot of people initially. Over the years, I wasn't seeing uh, a lot of doctors. I was seeing one psychiatrist and one counselor. Little did I know that I needed to be seeing doctors for my pain and, and aches. I didn't know that. And honestly, I didn't care about all that. I just was doing the psychiatric thing because I was only when I was 16. Over the years, like I said, I have left a few times and came back. My issue is, is I got an attorney. Well, that attorney has since dropped me. And the reason they dropped me is because apparently my idiotic counselor, or my idiotic psychiatrist, tends to believe my form of depression is dysmithia. Bullshit. You don't have dysmithia for 16 years. A low form of depression? Bullshit. Well, guess what? I have another counselor, another source at another clinic that I frequent and I haven't discussed this clinic and I didn't really want to talk about this in this video but let's just say it's a clinic that happens to people who have used drugs and you go to this clinic to get off of your street drugs to try to at least maintain and it's not the best place to be going but um, they offer me a medication that helps with not wanting to use illegal street drugs let's just say that the counselor there has been working with me for the year and a half. My previous counselor before that, not been at this place four years, died. They brought in another guy that had, at that time, eight years, which is now ten years, of working with depressed people. And that was his specialty. He was a licensed mental health counselor, but uh, his specialty was depression and social anxiety disorder. Her, couldn't have got a better counselor. So I've been seeing him for a year and a half. Now this is away from my main ones. Well my counselor at this place who specializes in it says that dysmithia is bullshit. He said I have manic depression. The way I talk to him, the way I'm able to express my feelings, he says I'm well spoken and well articulate. And he says I'm able to express my feelings in a way that lets him know how severely my depression is. He says that there are people who are depressed, really depressed, like me, who are, who are well-spoken and articulate, that they understand their disease and are able to speak to it in such a way. And that is a benef benefit of having him as my other counselor. He says that I am way above dysmithia, that dysmithia would not be persistent for the last 16 years. And that a low form of depression, and he flat out told me, Chris, it's bullshit, and they're rooking you. He says that I should be able to get disability. So what's going on with my case is I had initially got denied, and I had an attorney. We had a hearing, and I was denied. Because apparently you can't get disability for dysmithia? Never once was there a reference to my social anxiety and my fear disorders. My doctor, I don't know what he's doing wrong. I don't know if, if he's... It's, it's a doctor that works for the state. Let's just put it like that. I have no insurance, so it's one of the free doctors I've been going to see. Maybe because he works for the state, he's not allowed. You know, he's only allowed so many people. He can, you know... I, I don't know how it works, but there's a conspiracy going on here, in my opinion. The other clinic I go to, I pay for. And I have to. Or else I would be on the street using cocaine, crystal meth, uh, Oxycontin, lower tab. Um, thankfully, I'm not doing that anymore. And I'll get into my drug years in another video. And I'll get into the clinic I'm on in another video. And I'm sorry if this is long. I don't care. I feel like talking. Don't want to watch it. I, I can't make you. But I am disabled. I cannot work in a gaining full 
employment anymore, especially in the field that I was working in. Therefore, I cannot sustain a lifestyle. And it's crap that, okay, again, I was, the, earlier this year I had a hearing, I, it, you get three appeals, essentially. So I was denied initially appeal, got a lawyer. Denied twice, and I appealed. Now I'm waiting, and they're backed up, so I'm waiting on, my lawyer has since dropped me because of that determination. When my lawyer saw that the Smithia and nothing else, they dropped me. After two years, they didn't see that before, but no. In the, in the hearing that we had that was probably going to determine me getting disability then and having it now, that's when they dropped me when they saw the Smithia. So I'm having to appeal this on my own. And because I'm so late in the game, no other attorney will pick this case up. I've been battling this for two and a half years and my counselors feel so bad for me because he said, Chris, you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to start over. And you're going to have to get another lawyer and you're going to have to use me. Apparently my records from this clinic, my lawyer never brought them in, never requested them. Therefore, my other counselor's opinions and thoughts that this is far worse than this mythia is nowhere in the records. They were nowhere at the hearing. Now, I am still on a final appeal, and it is possible that on my own behalf that I can have those records brought into my final hearing whenever that date is set. And there may be hope. But I, my counselor, uh, the one that's with me, the one that I'm paying to use, uh, he specifically says to start over. But the bonus to that is they will go back to the two and a half years from the initial disability claim that I wasn't working. And it may take another two and a half years. But he told me I will get five years of back pay. And that will be roughly $8,000 for waiting because my disability would be six hundred and forty nine dollars a month from the times that I worked so you know I'm kinda debating should I start over and wait another two and a half years uh, uh, unfortunately I have to depend on people to get by and it's sad because my money I was very good about saving money but it's drying up and it's almost gone so I'm really gonna have to get help from my grandmother and, and I, I'm not ashamed to admit that she helps me get by and my brother so those two people I do have my brother he doesn't like to do it but he'd rather see me at the clinic than to see me using street drugs to cope with my depression the depression meds I take do not work they do not work the anxiety medicine I refuse to take Xanax and I've described that in another video and uh, like I said, the next day would be clinical trials, and you know you got to pay for those apparently. And I know I went over the place in this video. This video is about Social Security disability, and I've been wronged because I go to a one of the free doctors that you know they have in every. I don't know if every state has them, but my state does, Florida. They have free mental health for you, but I guess since those doctors work for the state, uh, they're not really allowed. You know they don't want. I don't know what it is. To me, it's a conspiracy. When I go to a clinic that has counselor, mental health counselors as well, and I'm paying money to use this clinic to get that medication, and that counselor flat out said, Chris, I feel so bad for you. You are depressed. Your depression is very severe. You're manic depressed. You do have anxiety. Because for the past year and a half, he's been trying his best to get me to, 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 to work on my depression and to get better. And he said, Chris, he told me that he's worried with people who have been depressed before. And he saw a change in, in a year, year and a half. He has seen no change in my depression. In fact, he says it's gotten worse. And he was very honest and blowing me. He said, Chris, you're going, you've got to keep pursuing this. Do not give it up. Because he told me the way I'm going now. And he wasn't trying to be mean. But he's like, the way you're going now, Chris, you're not. You're going to end up in a place you don't want to be you're going to end up not being able to work and probably back out on the street doing drugs he told me I deserve disability that it's not a cop out that I was born with this and it's manifested and that's what it's there for and he said I, I put in my work when I was able to work and I did my job and I've earned the right to a disability in case I became disability that I paid into the social security disability system thus giving me the right to if I ever became disability as an American 
and I have. I, I'm disabled, and to be honest with you, I've probably been disabled all my life, but it wasn't as severe as it has been the last four and a half years. And the last four and a half years, like I said, it's been nothing but a down. There have been no ups, and uh, it's really bad. And he just said, Chris, you've got to not give up on it. And I firmly believe once they see my records from him, they'll have two conflicting reports. They'll have one set of doctors from the state saying it's just dysmithia with no mention of social anxiety and fear disorder. And you're going to have one that I'm paying to see that says manic depression, acute social anxiety, and fear disorder. So what's the state going to choose? What's the government going to choose? I don't know. I'll continue to update you. This has been The Loner Files with Chris Strickland. Thank you for patiently sitting here and listening to me for 20 minutes. I greatly appreciate it. And again, if there's anybody out there that wants to chat with me directly through uh, YouTube, wants to send me videos and chat with me through videos, um, please, please do. I welcome it. I need it. I need to make friends. Even if we're not friends in real life, having friends on the Internet would be such, such a pleasure just to have someone else to talk to other than myself. <laughs> All right. Peace.